please don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. It really does help me to grow. Thank you. This is St Leonard's Church at Ribsford near Bewdley. I love local history and beautiful architecture. I'm not an expert in either field to be honest. I'm just a kind of keen amateur historian and someone who's just appreciates architecture. I couldn't tell you about the different types of architecture and the different constructions and all that kind of thing, but I'm just interested in beautiful buildings and, and local history, really. I'm not particularly religious either, uh, not in the sense that I belong to a particular faith or anything like that, but this place is truly magnificent. It's so incredibly peaceful. I defy anyone who visits here to, to not feel that sense of peace and tranquility. I think no matter what particular set of beliefs you do or don't align, on yourself with this is a perfect spot for a bit of reflection really and it was absolutely stunning it was so peaceful apart from a guy who's obviously doing a bit of grounds work with a, with a leaf blower never quite understood the point of a leaf blower to be honest but each to their own parts of this church actually date back to the early 12th century where it was enlarged in the 15th century and the chancel was built in 1877 one of the most significant parts of the church though is the tympanum I've got a bit of an account of the story behind this tympanum, which actually was very kindly sent to me by a friend of mine, Andy Pye, and it's from an account by somebody called George E. Roberts, and it was written in September 1853, and it's from an account called A Walk Round Kidderminster with Notes by the Way. So I'm just going to read you what he says about this tympanum he doesn't call it a tympanum he calls it a lintel and it says a mysterious carving situated upon the fan-shaped lintel of the northern door and known as john of horsehill and thereon hangeth a tale which is briefly as followeth john of horsehill was a mighty hunter flourishing soon after the conquest the carving is said to represent a celebrated shot he performed Hunting one day near the Severn, the legend declareth that he started a fine stag, which took in the direction of the river. Fearing to lose it, he discharged an arrow, which piercing the animal continued its flight, and struck a salmon which had, as is customary with those fish, leaped from the surface of the water, with so much force as to transfix it. This being considered a very remarkable shot, a carving representing it was affixed to the church of St. George at Rivesford, then in course of erection. But a closer inspection of the carving reveals its true character. It exhibits a rude human figure with a bow, before whom a nondescript creature, transfixed with an arrow, is lying. Now, as this animal possesses two very apparent legs, its claims to being a fish are very slight, and we recognise it forthwith as a beaver. The rationale of it, then, is this. The carving is emblematical of certain privileges enjoyed by the monks of old, in the slaughter of both terrestrial and aquatic game, the land animals being represented by the stag, the water game by the beaver, and in confirmation of this we find a small island not far from Ribsford, still known as Beaver Island. For saith the ancient chronicles, in Ye Severn River are plenty and great store of beavers. I think that's a fantastic account, um, really interesting, obviously I mean that's what, 100 and 70 years old now this writing so to have a copy of that was really i was really grateful to get that from andy it was good of him to send me that if you enjoy this type of content please hit subscribe and um yeah please enjoy the rest of the the walk around thank you